Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rahul Haware from the channel Ask Applying Scientific Knowledge and I welcome you in this 8th video of Rheology. And in this model we are going to talk about non-Newtonian liquids and uh, specifically we are talking about pseudoplastic liquids. And when we are thinking about pseudoplastic liquids, let's take an example from our day-to-day -day life and that is tomato ketchup, isn't it? And when we are thinking about tomato ketchup, well, <clears throat> let's assume that you kept this tomato ketchup in the refrigerator and you want it to eat your french fries next day. Is it coming easily out of this container? Well, no. Why is that? Well, you know that you kept it in refrigerator, therefore viscosity has been increased. So what is your strategy? Well, what are you doing? Well, you are hitting it on certain solid object or with the help of hand you are hitting that container very hard isn't it and once you hitting that one this container with your hand you are able to get this tomato ketchup out of the container so what's going on here well when you are keeping in refrigerator viscosity is increasing in other words it's creating its certain three dimensional structure and because of that three dimensional structure viscosity is increasing and once you are shaking or hitting it hard you are disrupting this three dimensional structure and you are decreasing the viscosity and that's you are gonna learn in next couple of slides when you will be using tomato ketchup next time think about pseudoplastic liquids so let's, let's dig more into it in next couple of slides so as I said when we are thinking about non-Newtonian liquids what does that mean they simply do not follow the Newton's law of flow and what is the Newton's law of flow well increase in shear stress leads to increase in shear rate and if you remember if you are shear stress and shear rate you have this linear relationship which is passing through the origin isn't it so right from the beginning these liquids follows this relationship and liquids which do not follow this relationship are called as non-newtonian liquids liquids which do not follow this proportional relationship between shear stress and shear rate are called as non-newtonian liquids and what are those liquids well suspension emulsion ointment colloidal solutions or polymer film coating suspension so certainly these non-newtonian liquids they do have wider applications in variety of dosage form like solid dosage forms when you are using this cold coating solution or oral liquids or topical suspension emulsions isn't it so it is very important system which you need to understand when you are designing these variety of dosage forms. So these non-Newtonian systems are divided into three main categories, pseudoplastic, then plastic and thixotropic. And we will have separate models for these three systems. So first model is of course in this series is about pseudoplastic and here everything is time independent. Plastic is also time dependent except this thixotropy which is a time dependent and we will going to understand why it is time independent. So when you are looking at the pseudoplastic liquids at rest they are pretty homogeneous but if you zoom in they might be like a matchstick where the molecules are randomly oriented or like a chain type if you are polymer they are like a polymer chains which are entangled and that's why this is a chain type or agglomerated small particles solid particles they get agglomerated together and you get these agglomerations and that is at rest when you are not applying any kind of shear rate but once you start to apply a certain shear rate what happens and why you want to apply a certain shear rate well you want to flow these liquids as we have seen in ketchup so you can break these structures these three dimensional structures and in case of matchsticks these molecules get oriented in lengthwise direction 
in lengthwise fashion in a direction of flow or these chains get distangled and stretched or there is a deagglomeration and of course everything is the direction of flow so liquid is flowing in this direction for example that's why everything is like this one in distangled or lengthwise orientation or deagglomeration in this direction okay and that is called a pseudo plastic systems and once you have this when you are destroying this three dimensional structure with the help of applying shear rate or sh you are getting these deagglomerations disentanglement and lengthwise in a direction of flow and liquid starts to flow because there is a decrease in viscosity by this disruption so let's understand more about pseudo plastic systems and its applications in our pharmaceutical science or dosage form here you can see the coating pan isn't it and we have tablets and you have this coating solution which is sprayed with the help of the spraying nozzle and these coating solutions is either enteric coating solutions or non enteric coating solutions for providing the intended purpose of that tablet and these solutions are made up with these polymer solutions like hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose sodium carboxymethyl cellulose povidone tragacanth acacia and all those things and if you have these high these solutions are highly viscous are you going to able to flow these solutions through the this coating solution inlet and are you going to able to spray it on these tablets no another example is the flocculated suspensions and as you can see here we do have this three dimensional structure of the solids and which is at rest this is agglomeration of course and once you are shaking this suspension with some stirrer what happens well you are breaking this three dimensional structure and you are suspending all the solid particles in the body of liquid and you are getting this suspended solid liquid structure and that is again coming under pseudo plastic system so what is happening here in case of pseudo plastic system well let's take again example of this polymeric solution you have this globular structure of the polymer and why you have this globular structure of the polymer well when we are thinking about the polymers where well, these are the chains and then they have tendency to agglomerate why is that because of this intramolecular stabilizing forces and then when you are increasing the shear stress on this polymer solution what will happen you are disturbing this three dimensional structure and you are causing this entanglement of these globules and you are getting this stretched lens isn't it in the direction of flow and this is uncoiled form and certainly here you have high viscosity and by increasing the shear stress you are decreasing the viscosity and you are able to flow and when you are going in the opposite direction what is what will happen well when you are re reducing the shear stress or when you are apply, when you are allowing that solution to settle down well again it will go it will cause the increase in viscosity and you have again really viscous solution so but what is happening when you are applying shear stress the viscosity when you are increasing the shear stress or shear rate viscosity is decreasing and that is called as shear thinning behavior that is called as shear thinning behavior there is a decrease in viscosity there is a decrease in viscosity and do you understand why do you need this knowledge well you know that there are certain pharmaceutical operations where you will be using this knowledge like coating in suspension formulation in emulsion formulations now another question is that let me make some space here because uh, one of the animation is coming up here so another important question we need to ask here is that why is it time independent why it is not time dependent i am calling it as an independent time independent why is it time independent let's take example of this suspension you have this suspension at rest it has the, this flocculation because of the 3d structure you did some shaking of the suspension and then you got all particles all solid particles they get suspended in the body of liquid initially it will take certain time 
But after a certain period of time, let's say three or four minutes, it will shake everything. Every particle gets suspended in the body of liquid. And now you decided to shake this suspension for let's say one, one year or one billion year, who cares? Will there be any change in the structure of this suspension? No. Once this, uh, once this three dimensional structure has been broken, there is no matter how long you will shake it, you will not get any more output, better output. And that's why this system is called as time independent system. Okay. So how you are going to measure the viscosity of these pseudoplastic systems? Well, we are using the rheometers. We are using the rheometers. And what this rheometer does, it applies the shear rate and then measures corresponding shear stress. Let's take an example of tomato ketchup again. You applied certain shear rate and you measure the shear stress. And then from this slope, you know that you are getting this viscosity mu A1. But then what I decided, I decided to take the same tomato ketchup from point, let's say point A here, okay, point A. And then I decided to apply again certain shear rate and then I got certain shear stress. And when I'm taking the slope, I got another viscosity here, isn't it? Point B. So the viscosity of the tomato ketchup at point A and point B is completely different. So again, what I decided, I decided to take a tomato ketchup from point B and from point B, I decided to apply again certain shear rate and then I got corresponding shear stress. And then when I took a slope of that one, I got another viscosity at point C, isn't it? So if you compare the viscosities of point A, point B and point C for same tomato ketchup, same tomato ketchup, what will happen? Well, the viscosity of point A, mu A1 is greater than mu A2 and then from mu A2 is greater than mu A3 and that's why we are calling it as a shear thinning, isn't it? As you are decreasing the viscosity, you are decreasing the viscosity with application of shear rate and that's why it is called a shear thinning behavior. And as this viscosity is not a constant, it's changing, isn't it? Mu A1, mu A2, mu A3, they are changing. As you know that, in case of Newtonian liquids, what happens? You have shear stress and shear rate, and there is a linear relationship. And from the slope, you are getting one value of viscosity. And that is called as absolute viscosity, because it is just single value for Newtonian liquids. But in case of non-Newtonian liquids, these viscosity values are changing. In case of non-Newtonian liquids, these values are changing. Like mu A1 is higher than mu A2 and mu A2 is greater than mu A3. And that's why it is called as apparent viscosity. Now, another important thing, when you plot these mu A as a function of applied shear rate, what will happen in initial region the things are not changing and then after a certain point the things are changing exponentially you can see that and again after a certain period of time the things are not changing again so viscosity is remaining constant so here viscosity is not changing in this region viscosity is changing exponentially and after a certain period of time viscosity is not changing again and as viscosity is not changing again, it is called as, of course, it is a time independent. Now, where are these regions? Well, 0 0.5 per second and above 100 uh, per second shear rate, the viscosity values will not be changed. So there is a no point of measuring the viscosity of pseudoplastic uh, systems in this region, isn't it? Below 0 0.5 per second and above 100 per second shear rate. So that's the one thing you need to keep in mind when you want to measure the viscosity of pseudoplastic liquids, for example, your uh, coating solution. Don't measure the viscosity below 0.5 per second shear rate or above 100 per second shear rate. Why is that? Because viscosity is not changing at all. Viscosity will be changing in this region and this viscosity will be changing exponentially. This viscosity is changing exponentially, not linearly like this. Okay, and another important thing, when you are reporting the value of no viscosity values of non-Newtonian liquid, which is apparent 
viscosity you have to report the value of shear rate you have to specify what at what shear rate you got that apparent viscosity otherwise it's useless in case of non-newtonian liquids specifically pseudoplastic as we are talking the things are not going linearly like this one isn't it things are changing exponentially like in case of shear rate if i apply shear rate here in case of newtonian liquid the shear stress value will be here but in this case look at that shear stress value is here which is way higher than that if i apply little bit shear rate in case of newtonian liquid this is a newtonian liquid and this is a pseudo plastic liquid if i apply let's say shear rate here in case of newtonian liquid shear stress value will be here but in case of non newtonian liquid shear rate value is here the things are exponential shear stress values are changing exponentially isn't it they are not changing linearly and therefore in case of newtonian liquid we are using y is equal to mx plus c to model this data we cannot use that relationship we have to use exponential relationship and how we can do that well we are using this power law model and why it is called as power law because we are having some exponent tau that is the shear stress is equal to k times gamma dot that is the shear rate which has been raised to power of n and what is a k k is called as consistency coefficient and n is called as flow behavior index which is a dimensional so now as you know that if you have like a is equal to b times c and you have to take a logarithm of it what you will do well if you take a log of both sides so log a is equal to log b and this multiplication goes into plus log c now let's say instead of a is equal to b c we have a is equal to b c n and you have to take a log how you are going to take log a is equal to log b plus log c which has been raised to power of n and again you can simplify that log a is equal to log b plus n log c this exponent it can go here so we can apply same logic here and what we will get well ln tau is equal to ln k plus n ln gamma dot and now this is a linear form this is a linear form how it is a linear form you know that you have y is equal to c plus mx and m is slope which is n so when you are plotting ln gamma dot as a x variable ln tau is a y variable you are getting certain y intercept isn't it and that y intercept is i'm little bit ahead so first let's talk about slope we have slope that is eta and then this y intercept is ln k and in case of pseudo plastic behavior n should be less than one so let's take a if n is equal to 1 what will happen let's put that value t is equal to k gamma dot n and if it's n is equal to 1 what will be that t is equal to k times gamma dot so this becomes newtonian liquid isn't it t is directly proportional to gamma no y intercept so everything is passing to the zero okay so on that note I hope you got an idea about what is the pseudoplastic systems, how you can measure the pseudoplastic systems and where are you applying this knowledge in pharmaceutical development. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing our channel Ask. So stay safe, stay curious and hope to see you in the next video.